Hi guys, it's Jamila here from Salap. How's it going? Today I'm going to be doing a quick video on the new Charlotte Tilbury Flawless, Everest Flawless Finish range. I've already used the Jouer concealer on my face because I had a bit of a tan and I'm also, it's my birthday today, so I wanted something that would last throughout the day. But because it's a bit rich, um, the colour, I'm going to quickly go over with the Charlotte Tilbury. Impossible to open. <laughs> Magic Away Concealer, if I can open it. It's really hard. Um, so this is a Magic Away Concealer. I've already done a video on this um, and I will link it down below. <laughs> I've never said that before. <laughs> um, so I'm going to quickly just go over some of my high points with this. This is in the shade 13 Dark. Um, and I do really like this concealer. The only reason I don't use it more is because it's quite difficult to open. Um, and it just kind of, just annoying really. More than anything else. It's just annoying, it's inconvenient. I'm super sweaty, so it's sorry in advance. But I just thought this would be a nice way to brighten it up. Um, because it's more of my regular shade. I'm kind of in Tansville at the moment. As you know, Charlotte Tilbury has released a new foundation, one of many. Um, so, so far I've reviewed the Pat McGrath, I've reviewed the Anastasia, and now I'm going to be reviewing the Charlotte Tilbury. The only other ones I really want to do, um, I do want to do the Fenty at some point, but it, I really actually, I think I'm one of the few people that really love the original, so I don't really have the same kind of burning desire to um, film that one as much. The other one I wanted to try, there's someone else. Oh, and I've also done the milk, so I actually feel like I've done most of the ones I wanted to do. Um, and the milk, so far my favourites have been in order. The milk, oh god no, it's too hard, I can't actually pick because I really like the milk the most. The Anastasia texture was, the Anastasia finish was beautiful and probably one of my favourite finishes, but the shade range is just not good, even though she's got 40 shades. The shades at the kind of deep end, a lot of them are the same colour and they're all a bit too light for me. There's, I basically don't have my shades, so because of that reason it can't really be number two. Pat McGrath definitely had my shade and I really like that shade range, but as I said, the, the foundation is quite expensive, um, so that's the only reason it's probably like not my fave. I've actually used the Pat McGrath primer on my face today because I've been trying to use it more because it is super pricey. <laughs> but it is nice. The Airbrush Flawless Finish Foundation in the shade 14 Warm, or should, if you're being French. Um, I also got the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder because I've only tried the Magic Powder and I loved it. But we were shooting for Halloween the other day and the makeup artist said that this is her absolute favourite. So I thought I'd give it a go since it's airbrush and in the same kind of range. It seemed like the right thing to do. You can get little samples. So I got the little sample of her mascara which I'm going to try. And I also bought her powder sculpt and powder and sculpt brush which I just thought was a really nice... I just basically like buying me brushes. <laughs> so I got the airbrush flawless finish foundation in the shade 14 warm i'm very excited to try it because every time i've seen someone use it they look very kind of flawless very airbrushed which is kind of exactly what it says on the tin um so what does this claim to do it says a full coverage foundation with a flawless matte long lasting finish apply your airbrush airbrush flawless foundation blending outwards from the center of your face for a flawless airbrush finish it doesn't say whether i should use a brush or a sponge so as per usual i'm going to do both i'm going to do a brush on this side and a sponge on this side this is the bottle it's absolutely beautiful it's stunning i really really love the bottle i think it might be one of my favorites so far um, definitely up there with the Pat McGrath one, it's beautiful. It's got a kind of rose gold lid, rose gold finishing, frosted bottle, um, and it just looks very chic. It looks very kind of dressing table ready. When you take it up, it's got a little gold pump, and on this bit you can see the Charlotte Tilbury logo, which is, oh, I'm sweaty, which is super, super chic. It's kind of thin, um, but it's really easy to open because of that kind of corrugated lid. So quite similar to the Pat McGrath one in that respect. Um, so this is the shade I matched myself online. Um, I think it's not too bad. This is the shade 14 Warm. Um, I think it should work out fine, especially when 
I lose a bit more of my tan. But that's it. On this side, I'm going to use a brush. I don't have my standard Real Techniques brush because it's a bit dirty. I'm going to use the Dior brush. It's not my favourite, but it is a foundation brush and it is one of their best sellers, so hopefully it will be fine. Um, so I'm just going to do a couple of pumps on the back of my hand and blend away. I actually hate this brush. It's like scratchy. <laughs> oh, she said stop from the centre, didn't she? Oops, <laughs> not paying attention. So how have you guys all been? I've been away. Um, I didn't do a video last week because I just, I was so tired, I was so jet lagged and I just really, I wanted to do a good one because the last couple of ones, I don't know if they've been the best, so I've enjoyed them, but maybe they haven't been that great because um, not many people have watched them. So <laughs> I thought I'd just take a little break and try and do something different. Also, I think people are getting a bit sick of all the foundations, so I think this will be my last Oh no, it's my second to last foundation. I've also recently got the Guerlain foundation, which I do really want to review. Um, I've tried it on already and I really, really like it. Um, it gives your skin a really nice finish, so I'm looking forward to trying that. That will, defi that will definitely be my last, my last foundation review for a while, because I think it is like foundation overload. I never thought I'd say it's too much. This is the brush side. Obviously, it's kind of matted down my face a lot more than it was before. It's quite shiny. It does look a lot more kind of even. Uh, it definitely looks a lot more balanced and the skin tone looks the same color. Um, so that's pretty good. It is a bit streaky just because this brush is not the best. And um, so now I'm gonna do the same amount of pumps for the sponge side. See how that goes. I feel like this might be actually better with a brush. I'm not sure. I don't know, I just make these random assumptions. Oh wow. It definitely looks like it's got a bit more dew um, with the sponge side, which, is tend which tends to be the case. So guys, that's the sponge side and that's the brush side. I've used exactly the same amount and I do feel like the coverage on the sponge side is better. So that's the brush side. That's the sponge side. I think the main difference between them, I feel like this side feels a lot lighter. Um, it feels like there's less on my face, whereas the sponge side feels a bit heavier but it does look kind of more flawless. So I'm just gonna go over this brush side with the sponge. Next is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Whenever I've looked at it in store, it always looks a bit muddy. It doesn't really look like it's any shade, even though it says dark, it just doesn't look like it would be flattering on a dark skin tone. But it seems like now it has been improved um, and it's not as kind of gray looking as it used to be. Um, so this is it. And this is the shade dark. It doesn't exactly look dark, but apparently it's like a micro fine powder, so it's not supposed to be as kind of skin tone based. So I'm going to use her powder and sculpt brush. I'm just going in with a little dab of it. And it does have a grooved handle, which is really nice. It makes it a lot easier to grip. And I like that the top is tapered. This powder is actually very lightweight, and, but it is giving a lot of kickback. Um, if that's something that people don't like. But it does seem to be kind of mattifying, but not kind of making it too heavy. And it's definitely blurring my skin a bit. And it feels super lightweight. I'm gonna quickly finish with the Charlotte Tilbury Tiny. <laughs> Full Fat Lashes, Five Star Mascara. It's small, but it's a sample. If you buy a lot, or I think if you buy anything, you get two free samples. And um, so I'm gonna quickly use mascara. I've never used this before, but I have heard very good things about her mascara. And I'm looking, I'm in the market for a new mascara, so this could be the beginning of something very beautiful. The brush is huge. The brush is as big as the tube. <laughs> Let's see how it goes.
I really feel like this has given my eyelashes a lot more of a feathery finish. Normally it's just one row of lashes that are like, all like trying to be up. This feels like it's really getting, I've got multiple layers, it's really pretty. I don't know if you can really tell, sorry about my contour. Okay, I'm definitely, definitely getting this mascara. It's amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> see, you see from the sides, look at all those lashes. And this side. <laughs> That's before. <laughs> this is before. Where are they? Where are they? This is after. Oh. Oh yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's really impressive. I really like this. Holy shmoly. Okay. Damn you, Charlotte Tilbury. And because I really don't have long lashes at all, they're just short and curly, it does make a really big difference when I find a nice mascara. And this year, my favourites have definitely been the Pat McGrath and the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir. They've both done me so well. The Pat McGrath has pretty much lasts all year and more. The Marc Jacobs has run out, but I did use it. I probably did use it more. Um, just when I started to use it, I just used it every day. But this, this is up there. This is coming in the crew. Wow. And I don't really wear lashes. Like, I just find them annoying. When I'm trying to be cute, one's like sticking up here and it's just, it's just not cute for me. Wow guys, that's amazing. I don't think my eyelashes have ever looked so good in my life. I really like this powder. It's gorgeous, but I do feel like I'm getting quite hot. So I'm just gonna quickly go over with a bit of the Pat McGrath. Just around my nose area. I just need something that's gonna work a bit harder. So guys, that is my finished look. I'm really, really happy with it actually. Um, I wasn't expecting it to look this flawless and so good, so I'm really impressed. I'm absolutely bowled over and stunned by this mascara. I've never seen my eyelashes look so full um, and so long and so black and so delightful. Um, hello, hello. I'm really, really happy with that. Um, I love the foundation. I think it's super flawless. I can't really see any flaws with it. The only thing is it is slightly settling into my smile line here. A bit more than the Anastasia and the, the Milk makeup ones did, but it's still really good. The color match is pretty spot on. This is the shade 14W Warm. Yeah, I really, really like the brush as well. I felt like that was really nice, really easy to use. And I really like the handle, the fact that it's kind of grooved all the way around. I didn't know that that was the case and I wasn't expecting that. Um, I'm a bit hot, so this is kind of handy to have. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with the entire airbrush flawless range. I think it's gonna do really well for her. I'm so much more impressed with it than I was the Magic Foundation. It's easy to blend. It's really nice with a brush and I think in future I will use it with a brush. I would recommend everything from this collection. I think it's definitely worth trying all of it if you can. If not, if you only had to buy one thing, I definitely would try the foundation because it's not too expensive. I think it's 30 something, I'll check. So the foundation is £34. I definitely think it's worth giving a go because it's like a reasonably priced, normal price foundation. The powder is £35. I definitely think that's also worth give, giving a go. The brush is £35. You can see where this kind of starts to add up. Um, let's see how much the mascara is. At 23 pounds so it's not too bad for a mascara 23 pounds i definitely loved everything i tried and i really find it difficult to say to you what you should go for i think the foundation if you're going into kind of september and you want something new to just start with and you've got powders you like i definitely think the foundation's one to try i really really liked it um the powder was gorgeous as well i was not expecting it to be that good and considering i'm dark skin toned i found it a really good kind of translucent-esque um, pressed powder which is hard to find um, and I think something people are going to start to go towards more just because you can't really carry around a loose powder so it's nice to be able to take that out with you and just kind of touch up throughout the day. I wasn't expecting to like all of it I'm actually really shocked I love this foundation it's just so pretty so flawless it looks like my skin but the best it's ever been 
<laughs> it rhymes. Um, I also am obsessed with this mascara, so good. The brush, so good. The powder, so good. All of it's amazing, so I definitely say it's a, it's a collection worth investing in over time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. We'd love to get to 100 subscribers. We're on 54, and I'm so happy and so proud and so grateful for everyone that watches our videos and everyone that kind of supports Slap in whichever way you do. Thank you so much, guys, and I hope you like this video. See you soon.